What is going on, everybody? Welcome to Into My GT Entertainment, and of course, I am Joel. Nice to see y'all here on this Monday. I don't know when y'all actually be seeing this video, but it's Monday for me, and we have one more thing I have to do to the Dodge Ram 1500. So, just to go through what we've done. Well, first, let's start this video, and we'll get into that. So now, what we're gonna go do today, and may, I'll give you a few minutes to guess while I go over some of the things that have been done. So with me, this is my wife's truck. She bought it for her that I have graciously stolen and upgraded. So we've done the headlights, got the LED headlights, LED fog lights. We have blacked out the windows, swapped out the running boards, put a tonneau cover. Let's see here, put the little bed step on it. We did the interior with the leather inserts, as you could tell. You, if you didn't know any different, you wouldn't even know that these were even inserts. And then I'm not gonna pop the hood, but we did also the uh, cold air intake. So with all that being done and said and whatever, there's one thing, just one, one thing to do that I haven't done yet. It is to change out the wheel and tire package on this truck now I am NOT gonna go totally aggressive with it but I am gonna change it up a little bit um, like I said I've the reason for that of the tire this is a used truck so I want y'all to keep that in mind that this truck was used so the tires on it have about 28 30,000 miles on it and they're getting close to the um, wear bars and stuff and you know me being me of course if I got to change tires I'll just change rims too right so we're gonna go ahead and take this down to discount tire this morning and get some new wheels put on and then they already have the tires that I need I got the TPS sensors and new lug nuts in the car so what am I putting on here can y'all guess go ahead put it in the comments Hopefully that gave you enough time. So what we're putting on this truck are some fuel wheels. Now, which fuel wheels I'm putting on, you'll just have to watch the video to see what they are. So we're gonna go ahead and get this truck down there and get this done. And uh, I'll have a conversation with y'all while I'm driving down there and we'll get this done, right? So we'll see you in a sec. There is one thing I forgot to mention when I was going around the truck. I also did some exhaust. Can't forget about that part. But we're gonna go ahead and get our drive started and uh, like I said, we'll see you when we get down there. All right, so we are headed that way now. Um, like I said, I'm a little early. My appointment is until uh, 9.45 and it's uh, 909 now but you never know what traffic is so we're gonna go ahead and head on down there real quick and uh get this done but let's have a conversation while we're doing this um job i know y'all don't probably tired of hearing it still haven't got one um i'm gonna start putting uh feet down on the pavement pretty aggressively here in the next um week 
or so. Like I said, I've been applying, but you know, things are kind of rough out here and you know, I get back some stuff and then it kind of falls through or you know, I don't hear nothing at all. So it's kind of one of them situations. Um, but what I want to talk about is why did we get this truck? Why did we get a Ram 1500 and why not a Ford? So <laughs> the choice wasn't really mine, uh, unfortunately. Um, Pam and I were up in Gooch Cars and Coffee one day and uh, I was just joking around. And I was just like, you know, if we can move out of the country, then I can get myself a truck, you know? And she goes, you know what? I've been thinking about getting a truck. So it kind of snowballed from there. Um, her purpose of having a truck is because, I, if y'all know or don't know, that both her parents died um, recently last year. Um, dad in November, I believe might have been December end of December right before New Year's and then the mom shortly after in March so there was a lot of stuff that they left behind um, just they had a whole storage unit and a whole house full of stuff so we had to you know try to find time with friends to get a truck or you know we would have to pile up the jeep or what have you so in her mind you know it made more sense to uh get a truck of our own and then we don't have to worry about dealing with any of that stuff and whatever and like i said our friends would help us if we could but we don't want to put them out and you know it's not their their issue so we just wanted to go ahead and uh get that stuff taken care of and unfortunately we still have it taken care of we got like half a storage unit we haven't even touched the house so there's so much going on in the world you know and then i lost my job and then everything just kind of snowballed into something else so either way that's how this truck came about she told me that she wanted to get a ram because it kind of resembled her jeep on the inside and she knew how everything functioned in it which, I mean, she could have figured out the, the F-150 also. But, you know, I was okay with it because it's what she wanted, you know. She was going through a hard time, whatever. And I'm not going to sit there and debate the little things. And actually, it's turned out to be a nice truck. Um, I've put my little spin on it, of course. And, uh, you know, now it's kind of where we want it. Well, where I want it to be. She got kind of upset with me the other day because I've been just kind of putting stuff on the truck and doing things. And not kind of asking her or getting her opinion on what if we did this that and the other but we usually have similar tastes so it's not usually an issue but she goes you, you know it, it is essentially her truck I, I have um bogarted it and took it over and started doing things but you know it is what she's paying for and um i can't if she wanted to sell it tomorrow i really couldn't argue with her you know but i don't think that's going to happen because I think that was one of her things, you know, get do what we need to do, then you can turn around and sell it later. And I said, once we get a truck, we ain't selling anything, you know? So, and like I said, maybe future endeavors will bring me a trailer and then I can tow the Mustang to Myrtle Beach or whatever and not have to put so many miles on that. And, you know, it's always good to have a truck in the family. But that's kind of where this came about and in Miranda fashion, you know, it took us like two seconds to talk about it and 20 seconds to freaking find it and buy it. So, uh, we were just kind of, she was shopping around one day and I was shopping around on another computer and you know, we found this and she was looking at stuff with a little more miles and, you know, maybe not as nice per se. So, we kind of met in the middle and she saw this and I, it was up north like 45 minute drive from me so I went ahead and told her I was like well since I'm unemployed I got time to go look at it if you want me to and I'm usually a pretty good judge of you know looking at it because of my detailed skills so I went ahead and um, took care of it you know I went out there test drove it did whatever and fed the information to her and lo and behold we got a truck that week 
Um, like I said, she got a good deal on it, I believe. You know, it had it had 27, a little shy of 28,000 miles when we got it. Um, and right now it has 28,366. You know, the truck is a Hemi uh, E-Torque. So it, it has power. The E-Torque is kind of weird, and I don't know from my Dodge guys or my Ram friends, uh, is there any way to get it to stop going into that like weird eco mode um, where it goes in, I guess, the four cylinder? I, I, I think that's what it is. Now, if I'm speaking out my butt, let me know. Because um, it makes the exhaust sound kind of weird because it gives it more like a weird little low gurgle, but once it kicks back into eight, it, it goes back to normal so um like i said that's just for food for thought and uh like i said the trucks turned out pretty nice you know it, it is i i like it now will it replace any of my other cars probably not but you know we didn't buy it for me and you know that's not the case of it right now but like i said it, it's definitely a nice little truck you get into it it sounds good now you know before it was quiet and uh you, know, you can't have a truck that's quiet you know you can't have a mustang that's quiet you know so it's just kind of one of them catch 22 so but that that's the deal with this truck that's where it came about and you know i can't leave nothing stock for too long so that's when i started modifying everything the headlights which yeah, i've said it before and i'll say it again i don't understand why people still use halogen headlights on their cars or even i for that as a base package or whatever because that's the first thing I switched out because I drove it at night when we first got it you could see maybe three feet in front of you and everything was yellow you know well I guess I got used to where the Explorer has the LEDs and the new Mustangs got the LEDs and what have you and then the um my even my 24 that you know they don't have they have the HIDs where it's a whole different look also so you know I said when we got in the truck it was just like Ugh, so that's got to be switched out. So that started the ball of wax. So I had to switch that out on the front end. Then the fog lights and the headlights didn't match. So I had to switch out the bulbs on the headlight on the fog lights, which were the, I think last fit is what I got. And um, I think it's a 6,000 K. So at night you can see everything. It is super bright and you can see pretty much anything that's going on. Um, tonneau cover, I think everybody that has a truck need some type of tonneau cover it's supposed to help you with fuel economy and all that too because you know air doesn't get caught up in the bed but you don't buy a v8 truck to freaking uh worry about that right so it had a bed liner in it it's not a spray on one it's a factory one so but at least it had that in it um we got the rear step for it because we're short it kind of helps pam still has a a little issue trying to figure out how to get in and out of the back but with time i think you'll figure it out a little better um you know intake i was just bored one day i'm like well let me go ahead and do something under the hood so went and did the intake on it um step rails i recently did a re video on the step rails um the roman step rails i have on the truck the ones that were on here before weren't very good they were kind of like a metal and they were rusty and, the, and it was just I don't know they look kind of cheap for what the truck is I put in the new Romic ones and they look much better the step is a lot further out so it fixed that problem 120 percent um, and then another thing with the interior it has the cloth seats in there because I guess the big horn is a step above from like being you know I guess the bottom of the line somewhere in the middle then you have like the big horn XL or limited and you know you have different versions but you know we weren't looking for the highest one with the big screen and all that stuff I kind of wish we do had, had the big screen but you know the one that we have is just fine it's the eight point something screen but it didn't even have navigation but you know it has Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and that works fine for us so you know we got that going on and then the interior, like I said, it had the cloth seats in there. And, you know, I saw Derek a couple times put on these uh, custom seats right here. The, um, I think it's custom interiors with the K. And when he put it on his car, you couldn't tell. So I was like, well, let me go ahead and get them for the truck, you know. 
they weren't too terribly expensive and uh you know it added a premium look to the car itself now so now everything in here is leather versus the cloth and then if there's something you know something happens to the leather on it you still got the nice cloth seats under it. the seats weren't bad dude we're just you know i'm used to having leather seats under my butt so that or some type of alcantara so i guess call me bougie i'm sorry but it is what it is um so we went ahead and did that and a lot of that stuff i did on my own um she wanted the tonneau cover was fine the steps were fine because of how they were the little bed steps she wanted and then she also got um, a rough country um, cargo tote thingy what it does it sits in the back and then it anchors to the sides so it sits right there right when you drop the tailgate so if you have groceries or need to carry something that way you don't have to worry about it sliding all the way to the front of the bed or you know what have you so you don't have to worry about that too much either so that that was actually a nice little investment I've used it a few times you know we've done groceries in the truck and we just threw it in the back under the tonneau cover you know i've had to get um some of the gas things uh filled the uh propane tanks so i had like two or three of them back there bungee cording them down and, and they were they were fine so that was definitely a nice little investment for that um and this is the last thing that i i think the truck needed are the wheels i'm about to put on here I didn't go into 33s. I didn't go into something that I'm going to have to alter. I didn't have something with poke. Um, I might poke out a hair, but it's not going to be, you know, like an inch or two off the body. Uh, for many reasons for that, because we're not really trying to do a show truck and whatever. Like I said, the tires kind of hit, hitted why the rims are coming in. Um, and then that way I could keep these as spares, you know, winter tires, what have you. Um, they, they look fine. Uh, one rim has like a little scuff on it or some type of, I don't know what it is. I'm going to try to clean it once I get them off the truck. But for the most part, you know, that's the last thing that needs to be done to this. Um, and then, you know, we'll just do what we need to do with it and enjoy the truck. Uh, and like I said, it's definitely roomy. You know, it definitely has a space in there and you know it's kind of comfy so i think you could do a nice little trips on this too but i know i have rambled i'm a few miles off of uh the uh discount tire and once we get there we'll go ahead and get the process started and um thanks for watching and uh like i said it i know i'm long-winded but sometimes people like to hear me talk so we're going to talk today so we'll see you in a sec all right everyone so we are here now at the discount tire and uh they're gonna go ahead and like dodo can you see that i can't see it there's like a glare there you go discount tire right behind me so what they're doing now is they're checking out the truck making sure that there's no dings dents or something that i can get them for later and uh they're checking the tires and everything else and so we're gonna have this going here in a moment so just gotta sit and wait now So we're going to go ahead and take a look at their process here. It's got a drag truck now. It's got a launch on it. All right, guys, so let me show you what they ended up looking like. I think they go very well with this truck. Um, it's nothing new. A lot of people that have trucks go with this type of wheel. Uh, like I said, I didn't go with an aggressive setup, but it does have a mild little poke, which is very nice. The tires complement it a lot better than the factory stuff. So uh, with no further ado, let me show you. So I got the Recon Grapplers, um, all terrains on it. 
and these are the fuel rebel sixes and i think they look spectacular compared to what was on here before and like i said they have a little mild little stick out you know nothing too aggressive is what i was going for i didn't want something to go crazy and it ride like crap and sling crap everywhere and so yeah this works out very nicely looks really good so what do y'all think i like it i like it a lot well guys that's basically the finished product now um, I've done quite a bit of work to the Ram and like I said, it looks spectacular. Like I said, just little tweaks here and there from what factory is and like I said, you can really make something look a lot better. Wheels, tires, tint, you know, that's always a plus. That's always a way to go if you can um, kind of see what I have going on. Yeah, I got a problem. But anyway, we all know that already, don't we? So that's what the Ram looks like. Yeah, I think it's uh, definitely a looker now. It's definitely more my style. Like I said, I don't have it lifted because I don't need it lifted. I don't have it leveled. Um, the only reason why I didn't level it yet is because I'm afraid it's not gonna fit in the garage uh, because I have the extra door that comes down the screen. So that kind of leaves about yay much space. So if I lift it, if I level it and it goes up that much, it may not be able to come in the garage so if i do have to have particular maintenance brake job whatever i need to do with it you know i can't uh get it in here and it's hot out here sometimes it could be like 100 degrees by the end of this week so yeah fat man don't like doing that stuff but what do y'all think anything else you think i should do to it i think i've done enough and you know i think it's kind of ours now and we'll see how it goes from here well, that's the end of the video my friends y'all got the backstory on the truck and why we ended up getting it and all that jazz so i know it's been a lot of talking and brandon's about to jump out the door a little gremlin that he is so uh yeah let me get right back to you but before i close out this video i wanted to explain the tote thing in the back of the rough country uh, i don't know if i was explaining it correctly but let me show you what it looks like this is what it is as you can see, it just slides in there. It's held in by the side straps there and there. You get it to where you want it, so it won't go back anymore. And then you can go ahead and load your stuff in there. And then when you're driving, you know how things like to shift in the back of the truck, you don't have that problem. You have strap holes there and at the top and on the side. So if there's something that you want to secure, you can do that also. So I just wanted to touch base with that because I didn't know if I was explaining myself correctly with that. All right, everybody. So that is definitely the end of the content for today. Um, the truck looks amazing to me. Uh, like I said, it is what it is when it comes to if y'all like to see it or not see it. But like I said, it is um, new to us. I think we've done a lot to it. I think we got it where we wanted to now. And uh, we're just going to rock and roll with it now from now on. So uh, catch y'all on the next video. I don't know exactly when that will be and what will, what will it be on. But something always seems to pop up, so we'll go from there. Peace.